Life Audio. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. And if you're on Facebook, look for our community group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast. And I just love that we are sharing what we learn. We're sharing the scriptures that mean something to us, sharing interesting facts, sharing graphics. I mean, so many fun things as we encourage each other on this journey of reading through the Bible. So if you're not in there, come and join us. And also, just so you know, we are now on YouTube. I don't know if I really are. like being on YouTube, <laughs> but we are on YouTube. So if you did not know that yet, we are on YouTube and you could watch us, which has been kind of cool because a couple of people have said that they're enjoying this because it feels like they're sitting down around the table mm-hmm. and having a Bible study with some friends, which I think is awesome because I I love that. I love sitting here talking with you, Trish. But yeah. um, so that's cool. Anyway, we're on we're on YouTube, you and you can, can see Michelle blush. You can yeah, see exactly. You can see that today we both have buns on top of our hair mm-hmm. head because we were like, okay, this is a bun hair day. We don't have time mm-hmm. to do it. So, yeah. so you can see all the fun things. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's on YouTube. <laughs> Daily Bible podcast. Okay, so today we are reading Ezekiel seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. Okay, Ezekiel 17 presents a complex allegory in the form of two riddles involving eagles and a vine, symbolizing the kings and kingdoms of that time. So the first eagle represents Babylon's king, Nebuchadnezzar, who took the king of Judah captive, and the second eagle symbolizes Egypt. And the allegory warns that relying on Egypt for help instead of turning to God would result in disaster. And it concludes with the prophecy of God's intervention. So 1722 says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will take a branch from the top of a tall cedar and I will plant it on the top of Israel's highest mountain. Hmm. And this tree then represents, of course, the Messiah and the restoration of David's throne. So even though there's this warring going on now, God has this new plan of this new branch and this restoration. So I love how a lot of these chapters, not all of them, but a lot of them will tie in that hope, that hope Mm -hmm. of the future. Mm -hmm. And then in Ezekiel 18, the focus shifts to personal responsibility, um, explicitly addressing this proverb, the fathers eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. So... That is a proverb that reflected the belief, and it was a common one. I looked in the commentary. It's very common. It was a common that, one. Uh, the children were punished for the sins of their parents. So mm-hmm. through Ezekiel, God refutes this idea, stating that each person is responsible for their own sins. And the chapter outlines the consequences of righteous versus wicked living, making it clear that individuals can't blame the circumstances or even family heritage for their behavior. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, I've done that before. Well, my mom and my grandma and they act this way and whatever. We can't do that. It's all our personal responsibility. Um, if the wicked turn from their sins, they will live. If the righteous turn to sin, they will die. And God emphasizes his desire for the wicked to turn from their ways and live. And so it says, and the people of Israel kept saying, and this is in uh, verses 29 to 32, the Lord isn't doing what's right. So this is how it t- ends up the chapter. Oh, people of Israel, is it you who are not doing what's right? Mm. Not I. Therefore, I will judge each of you. Oh, people of Israel, according to your actions, says the sovereign Lord, repent and turn from your sins. Don't let them destroy you. Put all your rebellion behind you and find yourself a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O people of Israel? If you don't want to die, says the Sovereign Lord, turn back and Mm. live. So again, it's like it's your personal responsibility. But even this is like so close to when Jerusalem is going to be destroyed completely. And he's still saying, turn back and live. Turn from your rebellion. It's just is illustrating so well God's justice, mercy, and compassion. Okay, so moving on to Ezekiel 19, I've got to say that this was this was a hard chapter for me. 
And so a lot of this summary is coming from EnduringWord.com because I will just confess, Ezekiel has been hard. Mm -hmm. Um, And so as I'm reading it, I'm not connecting all the dots. And I, and, and I have been re I've just been relying a lot on research now and not being able to go, well, oh, I see this, you know, I can connect it. So anyway, just so you know, much of my summary (laughs) is coming from enduringword.com right now. And, and so this in Ezekiel 19, we're seeing a lamentation for princes of Israel that was um, considering how badly the last several kings have ruled and the judgment that answered their wickedness. And so for the first of the laments is a story of a lioness and her two cubs. And this is most likely talking about Jerusalem or Israel. And one of her cubs signifies Josiah's son, who reigned as a king for three mm-hmm. short months. And we know that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And his name was Jehoah. Jehoahaz, and he was taken to Egypt in chains. And then she had a second cub, and this was King Jehoiachin of Judah, who reigned from 1609 to 597 BC. And he also learned the ways of lions, and he devoured men, and he was taken prisoner by um, Babylonia. Warren Wordsby, who is an author and also scholar, said that in this brief parable, the Lord made it clear that these two kings of Judah thought themselves to be great leaders, but they ignored the word of God and he cut them down after their brief reigns. Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that we see that as we look back in the kings, as we look back on the judges, there were so many that ignored the word of God. And so he would take them out eventually. If he wouldn't do it soon, he would take them out eventually. Well, Ezekiel returned to a familiar image of the vine. Remember, we, we, we talked about the vine the other day. Well, he returns to a familiar image of the vine as a representation of Israel. And the picture is of a fruitful and strong kingdom. But then she was plucked, meaning that there came a day when God no longer blessed Israel and her kings, and they persistently rebelled against him. And so she was cast down to the ground. And as a result of God's judgment, her strong branches were broken and withered, and the strong branches represented her later kings. Fire came out and consumed her. And these two paragraphs, These two parables are describing and prophesying the tragedy of the last few kings of Judah. And when the kings and leaders over the people of God are ungodly and become rightful targets of God's judgment, then there is truly a reason Mm -hmm. for lamentation. And that is what we finished up today with was really, truly lamentation. I think, was it in a funeral dirge or a funeral? Songs. Funeral songs, yeah, yeah, funeral songs. And it's just like this God knows what's happening. He's tying it together for the people. He's saying this is like we are we are mourning because of these kings, and that God is still saying that they deserve the judgment because look at how they've acted. And whether it's through these funeral songs, whether it's through parables, word pictures, again, God's just delivering these messages to the people because he wants them to change. He's like still mm-hmm. giving them. Like it said a little bit ago when the chapter I read, like soften your hearts, turn to me. He's still wanting them to turn to him. Yeah. Yeah. God keeps giving. He's like, I'm the God of second chances, third chances, Mm -hmm. fourth chances, Mm -hmm. a hundred billion gazillion, (laughs) you know, whatever, you know, you can make up words of numbers. He is infinitely the God of those chances. And he has been, but he's like, okay, that chance, that last final chance was the last final straw. And, um, and we're, we're seeing that and it is Mm -hmm. reason to lament. Well, Mm -hmm. we need to take a break here from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. The Action Bible is the best-selling illustrated Bible for grade school and middle school kids. And the Action Bible has been created to engage your kids through Bible stories and illustrations. And the stories are in chronological order to make it easy for kids to follow the historical flow of God's redemptive story. We have the Action Bible and I love it. 
From Genesis to Revelation, every page sparks my kids' excitement to explore God's Word and to get to know Him better. Just like popular graphic novels, but better, young readers can see God's active presence in the lives of heroes of the faith. There are stories about Jesus and other great men and women of God. These illustrated stories make the Bible come alive. And guess where I saw it, Michelle? Where? At Walmart! At Walmart. And you know, Trisha, for a limited time, our friends can purchase their copy of the Action Bible at their local Walmart or Sam's Club and save over 30% off a retail price. So visit your nearest Walmart or Sam's Club today and purchase your copy of the Action Bible. Christian Book is offering another chance to win a $500 gift card with a brand new giveaway. But you only have until the end of August to sign up for a chance to win at christianbook.com slash daily. Visit christianbook.com today and browse their amazing selection of more than 45,000 homeschool resources. This includes curriculum, books, fun electives, science kits, and more. Plus, wait till you hear this. They also have sample pages, book lists, and even free printable PDFs that you can download and use today. Everything you need to start the school year is at Christian Book. So visit ChristianBook.com today. And don't forget to sign up for a chance to win a $500 gift card this month at ChristianBook.com slash daily. Okay, the word of the day is planted. And planted is to place like a seed, a bulb, or a plant in the ground so that it can grow. So, you know, have you ever witnessed how a seed blossoms when it's given the proper care Mm -hmm. and soil? In homeschool, we've had a lot of beans that if you put them in a wet paper towel and then put them in the window, the root system will come out. (laughs) So it's a great way to teach your kids uh, how the different seeds can actually grow the roots out of just a little bean. Any dry bean can grow roots. But after a while, they need to be put into the moist soil and given lots of sunshine. And so Ezekiel 17 paints this picture of God's careful hand and he's planting a sprig and he wants it to grow you know, strong and tall. And it makes me think of, um, you know, in Jesus day, he said in Matthew 13, 31 through 32, Um, It says, there's another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted Mm. in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make a nest in its branches. So we see that, you know, definitely the things that were planted, that it was talks about like the wrong things were planted, the wrong things were growing. Um, God was talking about the the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar and this planting of the, you know, the, he wants to take up the branch from this bad, bad kingdom and God's going to build this new kingdom. So remember in Ezekiel 17, 22, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will take a branch from the top of the tall cedar and I will plant it on top of Israel's highest mountain. And so we have here this planted of this, the seed that is planted. And so, I thought about seeds that were planted in my life. When were those good things planted? So I was going through pictures recently and there was pictures of kids crusades and church camps and baptisms and Sunday school outings. And so many seeds were planted. And in high school, even after I made a lot of mistakes, um, you know, I opened my heart and those seeds sprouted. So perhaps you can recall a friend or a Sunday school teacher who whispered to you about the love of God, and it seemed so small at the time and perhaps even insignificant, but it was the kingdom of God being planted in your life. So it just makes me think, Michelle, like somewhere the seed is planted. And we see that in Ezekiel, God takes that little bit of that sprout and plants Mm. it and becomes the kingdom of heaven. And in our lives, we have those seeds, like maybe a friend or a Sunday school Mm -hmm. teacher or a parent who whispered to us about the love of God. And it seems so small at the time, like this little sprout that God's talking about. 
is plucking is going to start a new kingdom that in our lives, there were those seeds planted. And so it's so cool that God put those people in our lives to sow seeds. And it may also make me think like maybe we're the ones that are the Sunday school teacher, the youth counselor, small group leader, our friend that are planting seeds. Um, and so even though we can, it's easy to focus on all the negative things, like let's zero in on God can take those little seeds and he could plant and just start this new thing with what he wants to do in someone's lives. You know, that's so cool. I, I I have a husband who loves to plant and loves to do landscaping and he is very um he's very gifted at it. His favorite things are roses and um and now lately it's been tulips. And and so as things start blooming in the mm. springtime and summertime, he's like, let's go, let's go check them. And he's like checking them out every day. He's like, let's, let's go check them. Let's go check them. And we just, I know it's in August, but we just planted some tulip bulbs. We had put them in the um, refrigerator uh, right after they bloomed in May or maybe it was April, put them in the refrigerator because we're trying to force them to grow a second time to ah. multiply some bulbs. He's been, he's been doing his, his research on that. And so we planted them um, probably about a week ago and he goes out every day um, to see whether or not they've started, if they've started sprouting or mm. not. And, and just as, and when I saw that you chose this word planted, I just thought of my husband and how he loves to go check his plants every day. He loves to go and check his, to tend his garden, make sure everything's watered, fertilized, and he delights in watching things grow. And I just can't help but think that that's our Heavenly Father. Yeah, he delights yeah. when he plants us. He delights in intending us. I mean, we already know he's pruning us. We already know he's fertilizing um, us, he's nurturing us, he's growing us, he's watering us. Our heavenly Father just delights in in planting his children and watching them go grow. And also, as we're talking about about planting, um, there's another definition to planting, and that is to to settle, to fix the first inhabitants, to establish, to so as to plant a colony, and. And so we've been talking about mm -hmm. planting as an individual, but it can also be a collection, like a grouping. And remember, as we're reading through the prophets, God is planning to replant, not just individual lives, not just restore individual lives, but he's planting a new kingdom. He's planting a new Israel and a new people who will proclaim him through the nations. And so it's very individual, his planting, but it's also even bigger than that, his planting. And I think that's so cool when we can come and see that that God's working in in my individual life, in my friend's mm -hmm. individual life, my my husband's individual life, and yet he's working also in the church and in the bigger kingdom at large. And I'm like, that's just so cool. And I, I think it's that. so, yeah, it's so encouraging because we are, Ezekiel's these, these, these messages of destruction and destruction and you've sinned and these metaphors and these word pictures and Yet there's always those glimmers of I'm going to start a new kingdom or soften your heart and turn to me. Like God mm -hmm. is wanting to do something different, even in the midst of they have sinned. He's sending destruction. They have chosen the wrong way instead of him. But he he sees the seed of what is coming. And I think that's yeah. so encouraging. So even in our lives, we're like, oh, this has been hardship and all this stuff going on. But he has those seeds of what he has for us, mm -hmm. what we can look forward to that he is also, he's also putting in our lives. And so even when things are hard or difficult, he sees the hope in the future. And I love that, that God in these very, very hard chapters, you and I are both like, these are really hard chapters, mm -hmm. that there are these messages that we could cling to where he's like, I'm planting yeah. something that's going to grow into the kingdom of God. And um, I'm glad that we have these words that we can cling to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. So Trisha, will you pray for us today? Mm-hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that even in the midst of these hard messages and um, that Ezekiel had to give and other prophets had to give, Lord, that there are always these threads of hope, these like golden threads that run through these very 
hard black and red images, the threads of your kingdom and your goodness and your future that you had for the people then and for us now, Lord, I thank you that you, um, even though, you know, those who, who walk away from you do have to face the consequences that you also have a future and a hope when we mm. just turn to you, Lord. And I pray that we may do that over and over, that we may turn to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the Word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading Ezekiel 20, Ezekiel 21, and Ezekiel 22, verses 1 through 16. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You wouldn't be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com and you're going to find other great Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. Also, I found one yesterday on sleep meditation. And so I know (laughs) I was like, it wasn't just the regular like, you're getting sleepy and da 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 It was like psalms and, you know, just nice things to think about God as you're falling asleep. And I, like, I oh, love that. Perfect. That's perfect. awesome. I love mm-hmm. it. And so that's lifeaudio.com. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Scripture and brain science agree. Meditating on God's Word transforms us and reduces stress in our lives. I'm Jody Nisnik, host of So Much More, Creating Space for God, a scripture meditation podcast. And each week I give you space to hear God's Word, listen to the Spirit, and pray about what's on your heart. And then we have a thoughtful conversation with guests to help us go deeper. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com.